Good evening once again and welcome back to Icebreaker and uh, I'm Senior Chief Vince Dickens and once again we're going to be talking again about the base transition as we have been for the last couple of uh, episodes and tonight as always I have my uh, commander, base commanders with me in the studio and I'll uh, run down the list as always just so you know who uh, you can get your calls into. It's Colonel Craig Croxton who's Commander of Iceland Defense Force, Captain Mark Lawton, Commanding Officer of Naval Air Station Keflavik, Colonel Philip Gibbons, the Commander of the 85th Group and Captain Michael McCartan, Commanding Officer of Naval Hospital Keflavik. Gentlemen, welcome once again. I know we're getting pretty good at this. Yes. Uh, I think it's a great forum in addition to the town halls and other avenues we have, and I think we've been continuing to get a lot of great questions uh, from the community. This is another one of those uh, opportunities you have to get your calls in, so make sure that uh, if you do, the phone numbers to call are 4613-4614 and 4550, and we're going to take those calls, uh, write the questions down on cards, pass them to the commanders on the stage, uh, so that we can keep the calls uh, flowing and going. So make sure you get your calls in. Okay, uh, I guess I want to start a little bit bigger picture before we start getting back down towards the base again. Uh, Colonel Croxton, I know there was a delegation in uh, from the United States government talking with the Icelandic government. Could you uh, let us know something about who was involved in those negotiations? And, and Sure. Uh, Chief uh, Ambassador Van Voorst. Uh, led the delegation, and uh, there were also representatives from Office of Secretary of Defense and State Department from D.C., as well as uh, Air Force out at the Pentagon, and uh, European Command, General Mills uh, from European Command representing uh, their interests. And of course, there was the Icelandic delegation uh, led by uh, Ambassador um, Albert Janssi. And uh, it was a productive uh, negotiations that occurred uh, this past Friday. Um, during those negotiations, the U.S. Uh, presented our position and our vision on how we see Iceland and the defense of Iceland moving into the 21st century, moving away from a Cold War perspective. And uh, Iceland was, uh, they were receptive and they listened to those proposals. Um, and uh, of course, there are going to be some follow-on uh, talks. The next thing scheduled uh, as far as talks go would be uh, uh, European Command would come back to Iceland and uh, give them an update on where the plan that they're developing stands with respect to defending Iceland. The way it actually works is you have the uh, our joint staff at the Pentagon and the Secretary of Defense, they define the mission that UCOM has to fulfill to defend Iceland. Once they define those requirements, then it's up to European Command to flush out the plan. And that's what European Command's doing right now. We've got a team uh, uh, from uh, European Command uh, at UCOM right now. We've got NASCAF also there. We've got the 85th Group representative and the IDF representative there. So they're flushing out the details of the plan right now. All right, so, and, and of course, this will be in a place as, as details become more clear. We'll, we'll be yes. able to put them out right here. Uh, well, let, let's, let's move down to, to near and dear to people's hearts uh, here at NASCAF. Captain Lawton, I understand that we, I know we've been pulling together a lot of data from a lot of the sources. Uh, on base uh, commands and so forth, trying to put together some general timelines to give us something to shoot for. And I believe we're, we're getting, making some progress. Right, we are. We've uh, got some notional timelines put together, and we started talking about these yesterday with the general public. Uh, I would remind folks that uh, these, these dates are not uh, fixed, they are movable, and uh, I would say these are uh, not later than dates and could actually move to the left a little bit recognizing that, uh, again, the way we are organized here on the base, our local national workforce is a large part of the uh, support structure. And as uh, our local national workforce are seeking and finding employment elsewhere, it's going to cause us to have to uh, flex and make some changes and some adjustments. But some of the timelines uh, or some of the dates that I think we're fairly comfortable with talking about, uh, we already know that uh, we've got to start a, a fairly large ramp up in our household goods shipment, our pack out process, and we anticipate uh, that process starting around the 1st of May. Of course, uh, to my left, uh, Captain McCartan has already told us that on 2 June, we'll be changing from a naval hospital to a naval clinic. And I think most folks are aware of the 9 June, the Dodd School being the last date. Some dates that uh, folks may not uh, already be aware of, we are anticipating that in the mid to late June time frame, our Child Development Center uh, will be uh, necking down and probably uh, uh, ending that operation. 
uh, along with that comes the uh, those uh, spouses, those uh, uh, members that are providing for uh, CDHs. They will be departing, so I would anticipate that also in that June, July time frame, most of the CDHs will be uh, completing their operation. Toward the end of July, uh, we're anticipating that the main store of the Navy Exchange will be closing uh, and we'll be shifting and, and concentrating the Navy Exchange function out of the Mini Mart, probably uh, changing that a little bit, adding a little more robustness to the Mini Mart. We're anticipating that the end of July is also when the commissary will be closing. Some of the other uh, uh, activities that are out there, uh, things like the pool, looking at our manning there, we're looking toward the end of July uh, for the pool to be closing. We will endeavor to hang on to the gyms. And of course, we have the running track, which is unmanned 24 hours, seven days a week that gives us an outlet there. And we'll keep that running as long as possible. Uh, the galley is out there in the, uh, in the August time frame. Again, that's a, a local national workforce provided. Uh, but we know that uh, uh, as, as people depart, find other jobs, we'll have to make some adjustments there. The community bank is looking at around the, the 10 to 15 August time frame. Uh, the mini mart, uh, the gas station, probably in the mid-September time frame, and we're, we're planning to keep the post office running up until the very last moment. Uh, so those are some of the dates that uh, are out there. Again, I would tell folks these are notional dates. Uh, they can slide a little bit. Probably not a whole lot to the right, more likely to the left. Uh, and that's dependent upon how the workforce uh, uh, remains stable. Yes, sir. And I just want to remind those phone numbers again, as you should be seeing them across the bottom of your screen, 4613, 4614, and 4550. In fact, we've got our first card. Uh, I just wanted to, to go back, Captain, just one, one piece. You were talking about the household goods process. I know we're very yeah. soon, because of the number, going to be getting to a very specific way we're going to want to be addressing the household goods piece of this. Right. We are looking at uh, household goods very, very closely. As a matter of fact, I just came from a meeting, and that's what uh, the topic of discussion was. We have on board the air station uh, somewhere around 2,100, 2,200 household goods shipments we need to make. And we're going to do those in the matter of about a four-month period. And uh, you can do the math. It's, uh, it's a lot of moves that have to take place. And right now, as uh, we've been telling folks, we do not have the capacity to do that. But we're going to ramp up, and we're going to figure out how we uh, can attain that capacity. And we've got some smart folks working that. As we start trying to put those kind of numbers uh, through each month, it's going to be very important for us to have a little bit more control over that than we have in the past. Uh, in the past, people get their uh, orders. They get accounting data. They pick up the phone, they call, they make their household goods uh, appointment date, they go over and schedule their move. We're going to uh, make that process, as I said, a little more controlled, and we're going to be uh, assigning people when they have orders and have accounting data a time to go over and set up their move. So we're going to have to uh, streamline that, control it a little more closely. Same thing with, uh, with POVs. We'll have a little more control on setting up those moves also. I'll go ahead and hand you the first mini stack of cards. I wanted to ask uh, Captain McCartan on the hospital side. I know one of the things we had talked about uh, as far as services availability and so forth as we go into this is, is dental. We've talked plenty about hospital. Uh, will there be any significant changes to the dental as we begin to slope down? Uh, yeah, the one thing that uh, has developed in dental is that um, our opportunity to be shifting medical gear away from the island is driving some of our calendar. And, and that's one thing that's going to be impacting dental. Uh, we have 11 operatories. The chairs that are there um, are very much in demand. And in particular, they're in demand uh, in Central Command and in Southern Command. So we're actually uh, going to probably be seeing some of our equipment getting shifted over to Afghanistan and South America. Um, with the lift of opportunity that we have, it's going to be in the June time frame uh, that we will be um, disassembling the dental clinic and uh, you know, essentially turning off our routine services. What we will have at the hospital will be the ability to uh, diagnose emergencies. Um, and if we needed to have uh, 
somebody see a dentist, you know, we'd be able to refer them into town. As it is currently, um, I think the reason that we're comfortable with the plan of having a date as early as June is that the dental readiness and the dental health of the population right now are fabulous. Uh, the dental readiness is in the 96 to 97 percentile. And with that, um, for Navy and Air Force purposes, we're in great shape. And right now, with that kind of health existing in the population, we can go ahead and curtail our services early, let that equipment get on the road, and not really lose anything in terms of our overall health. And I, I think one of the things we need to remind people, obviously, like always, if you do have an appointment made, keep it because, or make sure you're there for it so that you can't make it. Yeah, thank you. Uh, that's, uh, as we are decreasing in numbers of providers, um, the appointment slots are becoming precious. So if you're seeing that you're not going to be able to make an appointment that you've got, uh, please give us a call. Uh, we're always receiving calls and we're trying to uh, get maximum access. So yes, good, good reminder, cancel those appointments that you're not going to make and we'll put them to very good use. Yes, sir. Uh, we, we did have our first deck of cards. I didn't want to get to some of those. I know the last couple we got had dealt with the commissary. Right. Uh, one question is, is the shortage at the commissary because of the base transition? Uh, no, I don't believe it is. Uh, we have had some interruption, some delay in some of our shipments arriving uh, due to uh, ship problems, weather problems uh, that have delayed some things. But uh, I would tell folks I had the, the DECA director in my office uh, about a week ago, and he assured me that uh, they will turn to and they will continue to provide us uh, the service that we uh, that we are used to uh, all the way through July. And uh, it was a very, very firm pros uh, promise on his part to support us, even to the fact of, of having to bring people in, uh, TADing them, if you will, to supplement our workforce to make sure that uh, the commissary continues to operate. The other question dealing with the commissary is after the commissary closes, can families eat at the galley on the weekends? Uh, I think we've mentioned that before. We're looking at that. Uh, we all remember back to those fond days of being able to go in on uh, Sunday after church and getting that dollar, uh, I think it was probably a dollar eighty-five back then. It might have gone up a nickel or so now. Uh, omelet on Sunday mornings. Uh, folks, rest assured that as we go through this process, if there is uh, something that we can do on the base to take care of, of you, take care of our families, uh, we're going to be considering all those options, and uh, if it's something that I can waive, uh, that makes it a lot simpler. If it's something we got to go to higher headquarters to get a waiver for, uh, we will not hesitate in doing that. There were a couple other service closure type questions. Right. Uh, when will the uh, wood shop and hobby shop be closing, and when is Andrews Theater closing? Uh, I don't have those dates right off the top of my head, but I can ask my MWR folks. They are in our plan. I want to say they're out there in the uh, July, early August time frame. And again, these are uh, dependent upon the workers, the staff. And, uh, and, and, and we, we know when the military folks are planning to go. Uh, we have programmed in to try to keep our MWR functions running as long as possible, recognizing we do have to neck down. The unknown is the... Uh, the local national workforce and, and how stable it will remain throughout the summer. That's, uh, that's the question. All right, sir, and, and, and what I'll do is I'll ask you the first part, and I'll, I'll also let uh, Colonel Gibbons talk about the Air Force piece of this. We, of course, in the Navy have our detailing team in uh, this week, and uh, just you, you, I know you've been in contact with Captain Taylor and, and those folks a little bit better than I have, so if uh, you could tell us how they think it's going, or how you think it's going. Uh, well, I can tell you how I think it's going. I think it's going uh, just fabulous. I know that uh, there's probably a handful of folks out there that aren't real happy with uh, the set of orders they've been handed. Uh, you know, there are some needs uh, that the Navy has and there are some restrictions and, and sometimes people don't always get what they want. But uh, the majority, the vast majority of the folks that I've talked to have been extremely pleased, uh, have, have uh, been excited to have the opportunity to go face to face with the detailer to see the options laid out in front of them, uh, not getting it over the phone. Uh, I think that's, that makes it much more personal. Uh, the Navy right now, as of close of business today, is 61% complete on detailing 
uh, all of our enlisted uh, sailors. Uh, the rest will be handled tomorrow or by noon on Thursday. And when the, uh, when the detailing shop closes up and they get on the airplane and head out of here, uh, we will have a very clear picture and, and the sailors will have a very clear picture along with their families of when it is they can expect to be leaving and where it is they're going. And that takes a big question mark away from, uh, from folks and allows them to start focusing on that, uh, that next PCS location. Yes, sir. Colonel Gibbons, I know AFPC, you're working with them as well on the Air Force side. Right. What we actually have is we have a team from USAFE A1 that uh, showed up yesterday and will uh, stay here through tomorrow. What they have done is a series of briefings today, three, in fact, one's going on, started at 6 o'clock uh, this evening, that is addressing a lot of the common questions that we had about the whole PCS process, COT and leaves, entitlements, et cetera. And so they've, they, can't, they have come with a brief to cover those topics. So I think uh, most people have gotten the answers that they were looking for to these very difficult questions. They've gotten the ground rules, the, uh, the different uh, ROE, as you will, that we'll use to set up the assignments and uh, how they will receive them. I have a, a, a fairly firm guarantee that by the time uh, we get to the end of this week, either Thursday or Friday, we will have the list of assignments for all our folks and that uh, we will release that sometime before the end of the week, that is my hope, and they will be able to review that list. They now know what the bidding process is, and so the team will come back, I think it's next Tuesday, Monday or Tuesday, and then we'll run a, a process similar to what the Navy has done, and we will go ahead and hand out all the assignments for our folks that are currently on station without, which is about 350 actually. Yes, sir, and we're still waiting on deployment orders. To we, are still, we are still waiting on the, uh, execute order or the, uh, the big deployment order. Yes, that is correct. Yes, sir. Uh, we did have a question as a follow-up on the uh, household goods question. Uh, the question is, if you already have a pack-out date, will that date be changed uh, due to the transition? Uh, we've been talking about this, and this goes to my, uh, my mentioning that we're going to start uh, exercising a little more control over the process of executing household goods movements. Uh, the fact of the matter is we are establishing a priority system. Uh, some people have certain needs that need to be addressed and we want to make sure they're taken care of. Uh, and then of course there is just a timing issue. If you have, if, if you are already in receipt of orders for say a, a July PCS date and you have established in the month of April to have your household goods move, there is a possibility that as we go through the priority list here over the next few days, that you may get bumped out a little bit into the future so that we can take care of those with a higher priority and those with a closer, a sooner PCS date. So uh, stand by. Uh, there are going to be some changes, and uh, we would just ask that folks uh, bear with us and work with us as we go through this. And I would like to add on that uh, because I know a lot of our folks are going to get concerned that now that the Navy has all their assignments uh, as their detailers complete, that process, that the Air Force won't have any available in the near term of what we need to move our folks out, and that is not the case. Captain Lawton uh, has, has and I have talked about this, and the plan that he's talking about is to allow Air Force as well to apply for those time slots that we need to get our folks out as well. So our folks need to stand back and not panic right. that, the, that the detailers will get them all out here first and that they'll suck up all the, uh, the TMO slots. That's not the case. Yeah, we, work together. we have had uh, extreme cooperation amongst uh, all the activities on the base. And uh, every Thursday afternoon, there's a meeting of the transition team. And that's going to become part of the vetting process as we, uh, every week, look out into the, the future and are identifying folks with orders, mm -hmm. uh, new orders that have been received, slots that we have available for household goods. And that's going to become part of that process, which is... Uh, everybody on the base represented there uh, to discuss that and make sure we're all bought into it. I, did, I didn't want to come back to uh, Captain McCartan. Uh, one of the points that came up during the last town hall, uh, or not town hall, icebreaker, as well as the town hall there, uh, was about medical records and who could pick up whose medical records and that sort of thing. I just wondered if we could get a, a clarified answer on that. The uh, medical records, um, is uh, a situation that can get sticky because actual uh, the law of the land applies to what information we can release. 
So we've pushed it to a point where um, ideally it's workable for folks. Uh, medical records, dental records, and x-rays, if I might add those into this discussion, um, can be picked up. The active duty member would be the person that should be coming to the hospital uh, to, the, to pick up uh, records. If a family member is 14 years old or older, so that would include the older children and spouse, um, the active duty member will actually need to have a waiver or release signed by that member of their family uh, authorizing them to pick up their records or their x-rays. Uh, children 14 or 13 years of age and younger, there would be no need um, for the release. And that is strictly the law of the land. Uh, so we've kind of pushed that to uh, the point where we hope it's flexible for folks and where we can meet our legal requirements. Those uh, release forms are available at PSD. So as people begin their checkout process, uh, they will be able to obtain that release form and as they complete it and present it to us at medical, we can turn things over to the active duty member. Right, and we also want to make sure people understand that when they check out TRICARE, they want to. Very good. Uh, everybody here, um, as they should know, are uh, enrolled in TRICARE Prime, and that permits you to come see a uniformed provider. Now, as you transfer away from Keflavik, uh, you can't necessarily assume that your health care is going to be coming from a uniform provider. So as you're going from one duty station to another, um, the process that people should engage in is, as they're leaving Keflavik, come by the hospital so we can disenroll you. What that does is it starts a six-week clock, where as you're maybe going to your home state for some vacation time before you report to your next duty station, you remain covered in the TRICARE Prime system. And as a military facility someplace in the States would tap in your name, they would be able to see that you are enrolled in Prime, and they will be able to provide you care. If you fail to disenroll here, um, as you go forward into your move, uh, there's going to be that point where the light's going to go off, and someplace, you know, that disenrollment is going to happen automatically. Um, and if you are not in a situation where you've already checked in at your new duty station, you could fall through the cracks. So ultimately, the, the very important point to make is that as people are checking out, come by the hospital so we can disenroll you and it will serve you best. Yes, sir. I, I'm just keeping the cards on now, and Captain Lawton's been hoarding them a little bit on us, but uh, uh, we can take them whatever order you like, sir. I, I know the one, the one I was, had circled for myself was pets because that was on our list to talk about. It's come up several times. Uh, the, in, quite, in yeah, the, the question of, is my pet going to be able to travel with me? Uh, yes, I think we've, uh, we've established that it's our goal uh, to keep families linked together, pets linked together, household goods linked together, POVs linked together as much as possible under the normal process that we've, uh, we've gone, grown accustomed to. Uh, however, uh, with this very difficult uh, process that we've got to work our way through, uh, there may be some that uh, that's not the option. And we, are, uh, we were having a discussion this evening about a pet airlift and uh, talking with Transcom and AMC about that. And uh, if we do that, the possibility of uh, loading a bunch of pets on an airplane may not include loading the, uh, the owner on the same airplane, but we're looking at options with channel flights of a way to possibly get uh, the families in the day before, the families in the day after, so the pet may have to spend the night in the kennel uh, back in Norfolk or someplace uh, as we work through that. Not going to be easy, but it's our goal to try to keep it all linked together. Of course, if they're going on normal ice air, you normally fly and, you're, and your pet is in the, uh, in the cargo hold. And I know we, one of the things we've told, told people in the past is be to make sure your pet is included in the count, and make sure it's registered and so forth right. for security. And we have established, and, and folks need to take heed of this, we've established 15 April that's only uh, you know a week or so away from now as the date that you need to have your pet registered with security. Now we understand that there are some people that have just acquired pets here on, on the, uh, the island, small kittens uh, and stuff that are not of the age to be microchipped. So you may not meet all the, the, uh, the requirements of having a, a animal 
fully registered on the base, but we've got to at least have a accurate accounting of where the pets are, who the owner is, so we can get them in our database and try to link all that together. So folks, if you've, uh, if you've got a pet and you haven't registered it with security, uh, please do so before the 15th. And, and only slightly less numerous times it's been asked is the one about second vehicles uh, getting them out of here. Second vehicles, that question keeps coming around. The question uh, tonight is uh, where are we with the waiver of uh, being able to have the government ship our second vehicle? Uh, we've run up against the stops on that. Uh, what we're finding is that's uh, law and there is no waiver for it. So the three options that we have uh, expressed before are still out there. Number one, uh, junk it and you got to pay the disposal fee. Number two, uh, go through the proper channels, the proper procedures and uh, sell it to a, an Icelander. Or number three, ship it at your own expense and we can help with some of the, uh, that process. Uh, but right now, it doesn't look like there's any relief for that second vehicle. All right, sir. And uh, another very uh, common question we've had is uh, people trying to pin down if there's a date that families have to leave by, or, or at least in the card, uh, uh, if you're going to be here longer, when, yeah. do you, when does your family be out? There is not an exact date of when all families must be uh, off the island. Uh, we want to try to keep families linked together, but we recognize that there are certain skill sets uh, that people have that we're going to need all the way up to the end. And, f and folks are going to need to recognize that as the base draws down, you know, the commissary closes, the Navy Exchange closes, uh, the galley closes, all these things that we're accustomed to are going away. And uh, you're going to have to ask yourself, do I want to have my family here? Uh, with with all those support structures going away and we'll we'll have to address that as we get closer and and more into this but I would I would encourage those that are going to going to be here up until the end of September if they've got family members they probably ought to be looking at an earlier date of getting them moving on with the household goods and the pets and all that stuff and uh, and we'll sort of put our pack on and, and do a little mini deployment here of uh, of the service members up until the, up until the end. Morning, sir. Uh, I know there was a follow-up question. I, I, know, I know it's one we've already answered tonight, even on the household goods, uh, about prioritizing household goods. Uh, well, this one's about prioritizing housing at the follow-on duty station. Uh, there might be one uh, later about prioritizing household goods, but uh, this question is, are we going to have priority uh, at our next duty station? That's a question we've asked. Uh, and we're, we're still waiting on that. We know we've seen that in the past where because of uh, decommissioning of ships uh, and, and forced short notice moves that people have been given a priority. Uh, we're still running that one down. As far as uh, prioritizing household goods, uh, yes, we are. We're identifying uh, by person, by, by member, by household goods shipment, uh, a priority system and establishing when those are going to be going. Fully integrated. Uh, throughout the base, particularly uh, with the Navy and the Air Force because of the, uh, uh, the numbers we're talking about there and uh, good cooperation on working on that. I think we made it through your stack, sir. Uh, no, I've got some more here, but I, I'm willing to take a break. All right, we'll, we'll let, we'll let uh, Captain McCartan uh, finish his. We did have a follow-up on the medical records and the 14-year-olds. And the question is, if your spouse or child over the age of 14 is still on the island, can they come in to sign for their own medical records? And the answer is yes. Um, the, the only requirement would be that they have a valid ID to present, and we can turn their records over to them. Great. That was easy. That was easy. Uh, just a reminder, phone number is 4613-4614-4550. Uh, keep your calls coming, and uh, we'll keep passing the cards along. Uh, yeah, well, break's over. <laughs> okay, there's some more here. Uh, will dependents leave before pack out date? Uh, if so, will BAH -B -A -H for dependents work? Uh, well, it wouldn't necessarily be my goal to, uh, to have people leave before their pack out. I think uh, if there's a family involved, it always goes a lot smoother when the family's doing that. Uh, you know, many hands uh, make it go faster. Uh, we are looking at what uh, uh, financial... Uh, well, incentives is not the right word, but uh, what we can do to help financially 
uh, throughout this process. And there are some waivers that we're seeking uh, for uh, people that are moving their families ahead of the member, uh, getting them obviously single COLA for the member, member back here, also establishing uh, and getting uh, BAH2 uh, so they get it at where the dependents are located. So try to lessen some of that burden of having two households and running split, uh, split families uh, if we can, and we're looking at that. Uh, do you know how many people will be left on base in September and October? Well, I can tell you we're going to be drawing down pretty uh, uh, drastically in, uh, in August and in September. Uh, I've seen some number counts, and we're talking in the September time frame at the beginning of the month, probably around 150 to 200 people. And uh, I can guarantee you that by October, uh, it's going to be about zero. Will there be enough loaner furniture to go around, or will people be put in uh, billeting? We're looking at that. We know we have uh, limited uh, loaner furniture. Uh, I think as we work through this, people are going to have to maybe uh, recognize that uh, where we've done this in the past and supplied a, a family of three or four, a full set of loaner furniture, uh, we may have to do some sharing there, if you will. I think everybody's going to have a bed. Uh, I think everybody will have a place to eat, but uh, they may not get that recliner or that, uh, you know, that extra sofa or love seat uh, in there. We're going to have to uh, work our way through this. And, of course, we always do have uh, billeting, and we will use that as required. But uh, I would hope that we can uh, keep people in their, their housing units because that's what we're used to uh, to the max extent possible. Uh, I do have a couple of cards actually to pass down for Colonel Gibbons. Uh, that will give us a chance while he's reading those to talk something a little more, a little lighter. Uh, NATO SATCOM has a pretty, pretty big event coming up here uh, this weekend. We want to make sure we get a plug in for that. Right. Uh, we want to make sure that folks know that uh, on April the 8th, that's this Saturday at 10 o'clock, and uh, as these things have been run in the past, you want to make sure you're there on time, if not a few minutes early. Uh, because this is the NATO SATCOM Easter egg hunt, and it is promised to be the biggest ever. Thousands of eggs, candy prizes, uh, and this is for ages 0 through the 12th grade, all ages, basically. Uh, and this is being supported by FSYP. So uh, bring your basket or bag, or if you don't have one, come on over and uh, you know, use your shirt tail or something, I guess. Uh, guaranteed to be a good time. And the folks at NATO SATCOM always do a terrific job with that. Yes, sir. Uh, the first one's for uh, TACOM for Colonel Givens. It's similar, I think. I think you can almost answer those in uh, three cards, almost in one fell swoop, sir. Once again, it's follow-up on, on the X order and, and status of Air Force. Well, the first two are related. It says, do you know when the X order uh, will come down? Uh, no, we don't, but my uh, understanding is that we're going to get it uh, sooner rather than later. We know that that is a key driver to a lot of the other movements and a lot of the big pieces moving out of here. And so that uh, concern is, is known by higher headquarters, both at UCOM and the JCS and those back in the States. And so they're working very hard to get that out. So, I mean, I would just be guessing, but I think we're going to see it in the next uh, couple of weeks, uh, if not sooner. So I uh, don't know when it is exactly, but expect it uh, very soon. The other one is, is it true that all Air Force personnel and families will be gone by June 30th. Uh, again, it will depend uh, a lot on how the squadrons uh, shut down and uh, who we need to remain here in order to do that in an orderly process. Um, the squadrons and the squadron commanders have put together lists as to exactly when they need people to leave and how long they need certain people to stay. Hopefully, uh, people that are asking these questions can go to their squadron, their first sergeants and their squadron commanders, and they'll be able to answer that question. I know we've put together the list, and I have it up at headquarters, so I believe the squadrons have it as well. If not, uh, please go up through your first sergeant or your squadron commander and uh, have them ask the question, and we'll get that information to you. But I don't think we'll be all gone by the 30th, uh, but we've got the plan to when they will leave. Yeah, and I would, I would just say a, lo a large part of that is tied to our ability to ramp up our household goods shipments and, and uh, attain the capability that we think we need. 
we know that uh, May, June, and July, particularly July, are quite, quite heavy months uh, as we try to, to push all this stuff off the island. So uh, 30 June may be a little on the early side. Uh, I would say uh, most folks by the end of July uh, are going to be uh, working their way on to their next station. I think that's a safe bet. Yeah. All right, sir, and we had a follow-on question about household goods as well. Right. Uh, the question is, will you still get two shipments before you leave? Uh, the plan is to do it as, as we have in the past. If you're a family and you're moving out, you're going to be offered uh, a normal household goods shipment and uh, an express shipment. And of course, unaccompanied people uh, are limited. I think it's around 1,000 pounds or so, so basically an express shipment for them. Uh, I, would, I would have... Uh, told you, Senior Chief, that I would not come next week had we not gotten this question tonight. And I love the way it's worded. Is the base, and I'm reading this, is the base still giving away washers and dryers when you PCS? You are? Uh, no, we are not. Uh, we are asking that question, and I know this question uh, comes every week, at least uh, several times a week. We have some some very nice uh, uh, equipment, some very nice uh, washers and dryers and refrigerators in our family housing unit. Much of it is, is practically brand new. But at present, there is not a process for us to give it away. Uh, I think that as we go down uh, this path, there may be a process through, the, through Dermo for uh, some of that to happen, but uh, folks, don't count on that uh, up front. If you're, uh, if you're leaving earlier than later, I would especially not be counting on it because it's not something that's probably going to be uh, coming on until uh, later in the process, if it even does come on. Question is, who do family members talk to about leaving early if their military spouse is staying until September? Well, I would hope you're talking to the military member, uh, talking uh, amongst the family, and then the military member is talking to his, his or her chain of command and uh, making those desires known. Yes, sir. Another round. Uh, the first one, very near and dear to all of us, when, about Subway and Taco Bell, when we expect them to close? We uh, we're anticipating that Subway and Taco Bell will be around for uh, quite some time. I think we, uh, we should all recognize that this is a, a contracted operation. It is a business that is uh, in business to make a profit. Uh, I can't tie a date to it, but uh, if I was a business person and as, uh, as the base population was going and my ability to make a profit uh, was going away because of less and less clientele, somewhere out there I would have to make a decision on uh, the profitability of my business and it would be based upon that uh, profitability. So somewhere out there, uh, Taco Bell and Subway and A&W will close. Uh, we also had one about uh, vehicle registration. Will there be a waiver for vehicle registrations or insurance if PCSing in May and renewal is in March? Um, let me see, I think we're looking at that uh, they tell me that Icelandic insurance will prorate your bill for the period covered, uh, but you will not check out with an outstanding bill. So uh, having just uh, gone through this process of shipping my spouse's car, uh, when I uh, took it down to the VPC and turned it in and got the paperwork, I took that paperwork back to the insurance company, showed it to them, and they, uh, they gave me a rebate on my insurance right there. So I don't think you're going to get a, a free grace period. You're going to have to pay and then probably be reimbursed uh, would be my, my thought. Uh, will TMO take furniture donations when packing out? Uh, there are Icelandic laws that we follow for uh, those kind of things, and uh, we'll make that stuff known. Uh, I don't believe TMO is the site where that would occur, and we've got some, uh, uh, some issues to work out with the government of Iceland on that. Is any of the equipment from the gym going to be on sale through uh, Dermo? Uh, don't know. Uh, there will be, uh, 
obviously there, there, there are lots of things on this base uh, beyond our personal property. Office furniture, all kinds of uh, equipment and gyms and just different places. Uh, we have not worked out those details. Uh, we don't know what all is going to be turned into uh, uh, Dermo, what all we will just uh, box and ship off uh, to be uh, used by the Air Force or by, by the Navy somewhere else. Those details are still being worked out. And we have a, a rep from DRMS, I believe, coming into town to help us with this. is for Colonel Gibbons. For, it's that, that very question, I believe, is also right. Yes, we do. This is going to be a, a huge Dermo effort. Uh, no matter you know how we look at it there's a lot of stuff here and a one-man uh, shop and it's a one-man well uh, yeah one-man shop in a Quats Quatsit hunt so uh, <laughs> there is some help on the way and I think it's uh, possibly next week they're coming uh, to help us take a look around the base and see what we've got uh, along with that there's uh, there's a group coming I know from the Navy and probably uh, will be one from the Air Force the uh, Navy Historical Society coming and they're going to identify artifacts on the base uh, that they want to be uh, claimed and shipped back to be placed in Navy museums and we're also looking uh, with Freethor at, at the IDF staff for uh, items that may be turned over to the government of Iceland and placed in museums uh, here in Iceland. Uh, the next question was about uh, the allocating space for ferries for those going to Europe. Uh, will they be allocating more spots on, uh, for folks taking the ferry to Europe? We're going to have to look into that. Uh, don't think that's one we thought of, so uh, we're going to put that one on the list, and we'll run down an answer for you. And I, and I believe this one is a, is a, is a repeat about housing. Uh, if military families leave before the military member, can they get housing at the next base? Uh, again, yes, we're, we're looking into that. Uh, the question before was, will they get a priority? Uh, we don't know the answer to that yet, but we're asking that question. And from the Air Force side, overseas, overseas PCS assignments. Yes, the question is, uh, if PCSing to another, another overseas base, will families have to fill out another Air Force Form 1466, which is the family member overseas clearance form? Captain McCartan probably knows this better than I do, but our belief is, of course, yes. Uh, that form is based on identifying your needs and uh, what you need for uh, to be able to uh, go to the next overseas base. And so we will, of course, require you to do that. Now, I will might venture to guess that uh, the restrictions to get to Iceland are probably more restrictive than almost any other overseas location. So if you qualified to come here, most likely you will be able to easily qualify to go to another place. I can't say that for sure in 100%. I know that some folks have come here and have developed uh, some complications that might prevent certain overseas locations. But to answer the basic question is yes, you'll need to fill out another 1466. All right, sir. Uh, just remember, 4613-4614-4550, the numbers to call for our in-studio guests. And, uh, uh, Catmon, you mentioned, I know earlier that you were talking about uh, shifting some hours in the post office or right, it's, with it's, that service. Right, it's not shifting the hours in the post office, but uh, we've looked around and uh, around the base we have uh, mailboxes. Uh, on any given day when we go out and collect the mail, uh, we're finding throughout these, and I think there's uh, eight or nine of them around different locations. Uh, one and two pieces of mail are, are ending up in these mailboxes and it's taking uh, manpower to make the rounds. So uh, we are looking to uh, consolidate those down and uh, just go centralized at the mini mart, at the post office, there's drop boxes there, so that's where the uh, that's where you can drop your mail. We're also looking at uh, folks that are coming in to uh, to mail or ship packages, and what we're finding is that uh, people that are coming with uh, two or more boxes, uh, it takes a while for them to go through that process. So we're going to establish a system where you can actually sign up uh, for an appointment, if you will. Uh, and maybe what we need to do is also get a phone number that you can call in. We'll get something on that. Call in to make an appointment. So if you've got a, a, a larger number of boxes to ship, you'll get an appointment so you can come in and be handled uh, individually, expeditiously, and uh, that will keep the rest of the traffic uh, in the post office flowing a little bit better. So uh, keep an eye on your roller channel. More to come on that uh, as we make a few uh, tweaks in the post office operation. 
Sure, I had a question about excess furniture and also uh, one for Colonel Gibbons about assignment. Uh, the one was about, I guess, apparently there's some uh, furniture being left around dumpsters now. Uh, well, let's see. Somebody's saying that there's, uh, and I guess folks are starting to uh, go over to the Navy Exchange and buy that uh, new furniture uh, to pack out and take home while it's on sale. Uh, and they're leaving their old furniture out by the dumpsters. Uh, I would uh, remind folks that we do have a process, and all you have to do is if you have excessive or, or big items is to contact Public Works. Uh, let's see, and they'll show up with a heavy lift, or, or I guess you contact the Public Works heavy lift shop and uh, arrange for a pickup of your stuff, and we can get it, uh, get it carted off for you. All right, and just to remind everybody, if you uh, haven't gotten your questions in, you need to do so soon. Uh, we'll be wrapping up shortly, so uh, don't, don't forget to get in your last questions. Uh, Colonel, the, the question was about uh, matching up uh, these assignments without an XORD. How does that, how's that process actually flow? You know, if I may, I was, I was hoping to get a lot less questions just because we scheduled the uh, assignments brief during the same time, but <laughs> obviously uh, I'm mistaken once again. But the question is, how will the assignments team give out uh, assignments without an XORD? Uh, what we're doing is we realize that there's uh, a lot of folks concerned about getting it, assignments. It doesn't really help us to wait and slow the process down. So what we're going to do is we're going to match assignments. We're going to get everybody lined up, and they, uh, but they won't flow into the system until we do get the XORD. But like I talked about just a few minutes ago, we're hoping that XORD is going to hit within the next week or so, and so it shouldn't affect the assignments process. That's our plan. All right, well. Uh, Somebody's a lawyer out there. <laughs> Glad to have her, too. Um, I guess what I'd like to do now is just do, do as we always do and just um, go, go around and give our, our last parting thoughts on uh, now that we've got one more week's worth of clarity or, or lack thereof. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm assuming clarity on this process. Uh, so if we could, Colonel Croxton, I'd like to start on your end as always, and we'll, we'll work down this way. Well, I think with the assignment team here, we've come a long way in a week. I know I've got about 80% of my command with assignments. Tomorrow it'll be up to 90%. Um, so there's a lot, lot of questions and uncertainty that's being uh, answered right now. And I think that's good for uh, Naval Air Station Keflavik because as, as those questions get answered, I think the stress starts to go down. But then I think as we, uh, as we move forward and the hard work uh, needs to get done, then the stress level will pick up again. So it's really a time to keep that communication open within, the, uh, within your command and, your, and uh, within your family. Yes, sir. Thank you. Colonel Gibbons? I just want to point out that I think it's fantastic news that the, the USAPA A1 and the assignments process is, is working to get those folks out here and to get the assignments uh, flowing into the system, hopefully in the next week or so. This is beyond my expectations. I, I thought we'd be at dead stop until the extra word came out, just like the lawyer uh, that passed on this question uh, uh, surmised. So I think that's absolutely great news, and, I, and my hat's off to the USAPA A1 for doing that. My next point, or my last point, would be that uh, folks need to uh, check our website. Uh, the two websites, both through the mill and from the uh, civilian side, are continually being updated and answering the, the questions similar to what we're getting here tonight. In fact, we usually post the answers to all the questions that are received on the icebreaker the following day or the next day as soon as we can get them up. So I ask people to please avail themselves of that information and uh, I think we'll be able to get a lot of the, a lot of the answers to the questions out that way. And, and the big question here is, is the Air Force still going to build a golf course? Well, you know, we never give up that hope, I would say, <laughs> but uh, we'll have to wait till the weather gets nicer. The official lawyer answer was maybe we're looking into it. There we go, maybe we're looking into it. <laughs> Awesome. Uh, Captain Lawton, uh, we thought we were just going to get away with a parting shot, but we did get one other question snuck under the wire there. Yes, we did. Uh, home layaways, for people who have a large amount of layaways, what do they do? Uh, the Navy Exchange is telling us that uh, they need to pay for those uh, and clear those uh, to be able to, to move forward. And um, my parting comments, uh, I continue to be extremely impressed with the cooperation on the base and the way folks are... Uh, handling the vast amount of change that's coming our way, the planning efforts, uh, the amount of uh, brain power that's being expended is uh, paying us great benefit. We've got a plan that's coming together. Uh, we are really getting down into some of the details now. But I would uh, be remiss if I didn't uh, tell folks that, you know, uh, we've got to make sure we stay focused. 
Uh, over the weekend, we saw several instances of folks uh, uh, possibly trying to, to burn off a little bit of that uh, excess stress with a little excess alcohol. And uh, while we didn't have anybody get hurt this weekend, uh, there's always that risk uh, that we need to, to be aware of. And folks need to stay focused on the mission, stay focused on what's before us, uh, be responsible, look out for each other, be that good wingman, be that good shipmate, and, uh, and take care of each other out there. Hi, sir. Thank you. Yeah, my pardon. Um, and if I could just, uh, you know, two points. One very practical. Um, for those out there that had chronic medical conditions with medications, and you're going to have a requirement during the time that you're transitioning, um, for sure and come in and see your provider. And as we are able to, Lieutenant Bunch has assured me in the pharmacy that currently we're capable of providing you a month or two ahead so that you can have medications during your transition. So please uh, get ahead of the program in that regard. Uh, and then I'd like to echo Captain Lawton's point. Um, while we're going through a lot of stressful change here, uh, I just want to encourage people to uh, make use of their facilities to uh, deflate some of that stress, um, to get good rest as you're able to. Um, as we're having sailors and airmen start to uh, work mechanically as we start to ship out, uh, make sure that you are using good um, posture and right processes for lifting so we don't have uh, any un injuries. Um, but in this stressful time, please take care of yourselves, um, and we'll all get through this in great shape. All right, sir. Thank you very much. Thanks to all my guests. Thank you for coming one more time, and uh, we'll be here again next week. And uh, thank you for joining us, and make sure you tune in same time, same channel next week, and we'll be hopefully giving you that little bit more information about how the base transition is going. And if you have any questions, uh, remember that both websites are up uh, and continue to have uh, whatever questions we answer here, latest information as we can get it. Uh, thank you for joining us, and from all of us here, have a good night.